This is the dirty hairy gun. Dirty nice. hairy gun. Oh my God, that is so heavy. <laughs> my mustache isn't thick enough to like truly like have a respect for this pistol. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Shift Fire, the exploration and appreciation of military culture. I am Israel Wright, former Green Beret. With me is as always, directly to my left. Thank you, Israel. What's going on fire team? Cameron Pfaff here, former Army Ranger, and you are tuned into an episode of Lethal Antiquities. What is Lethal Antiquities? Well, Israel, I am so glad you asked. Lethal Antiquities is a segment where we bring in an expert from an array of different backgrounds to include the firearm industry, the video game industry, the movie industry, you name it, we're bringing in somebody. And they are gonna give us a mystery box, the contents that we don't know what's inside, but we're gonna find out, we're gonna learn about it, and most importantly, we're gonna shoot the damn thing! That's the best part, really, actually. Absolutely. It's all just a prelude to be able to shoot awesome, mysterious, historical weapons. But before we dive in, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up on the latest and greatest from all things Shift Fire. You ready? Let's do it, man. Let's go! Beep, beep. Hey, Clay! Yes. Welcome in, brother. Clay, Welcome familiar back. face. What's going on, brother? Good to see you guys. Folks, for those that don't know, this is Clay Van Sickle from MovieGunGuy.com. Clay, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, I'm an armorer with MovieGunGuy.com, also known as Mike Tristano and Company. We provide weapons and advising for all the weapons you see in movies and TV shows. What's a project that we might have been exposed to that you've done? Uh, recently on the History Channel, we did a show called uh, I Was There, so we did a whole Jesse James shootout. Should be a lot of fun. No kidding, all right. Cool, man. Well, since you're here, we know we're getting something cool. Now, it's time for the mystery. <laughs> we have, I see three boxes. There's three boxes, too. Yes. yes. And last time you threw us through a loop because I thought it was this box and it turned out to be that box, but now there's another box, so I don't know what to think. I don't know what to do with my hand. <laughs> I would love a hand. The famous Clay Van Sickle hint. Please let us know. All right, your hint's going to be a lot different than last time. Here's your hint. Okay. 70s. 70s. Wait, what? Okay, 70s. Now, see, we all know that 70s could mean a lot of different things. It could mean the 1670s, the 1570s, it could mean the 1470s, the 13s. Well, you get my point. It could mean 70s something. 70s. Now, you think he's talking about the year, or you think he's talking about a caliber or like a size? I don't even know my own name right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here just like, cue music. <laughs> Well, then I'm going to go with this box, and I'm going to say we have... I'm going to say there's a shotgun in here. A shotgun? A shotgun. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah. You think I'm going to be copying you, but I was actually thinking of, like, the 1970s. I don't know why when I think of the 1970s, I think of shotguns. But yeah. uh, maybe that's just because my exposure to pop culture has been like Vietnam movies, you know, right. or Dirty Harry type stuff, or Charles Bronson, things like that. I don't know, that always makes me think, think of shotguns. So. Okay. I will say that parts of your guesses were pretty darn close. Hearts. It's Charles Bronson! I got Bronson. the box! I got the box! I did get the box. Ah, wait a second! <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Look at that piece of metal. That's a big gun. Smith & Wesson Model 29. Model 29. Does it look familiar to you at all? Well, I mean, we know the Schofield revolver, right? right? So that was Model 3. Uh, that was model, model 29. Model 29. Okay, so that shoots a big round. Just differences from revolvers we've seen before. Larger grip Yep. right here. Yeah, it looks a little more streamlined, not as chonky. Right. Know? So 1957, this thing came out. Uh, it was officially called the Model 29 at that point, the end frame revolver. This was used pretty commonly with law enforcement, but it became really famous in 1971 when a detective with the San Francisco Police Department told a perpetrator that it would blow his head clean off. This is the Dirty Harry gun. Dirty nice. Harry gun. Do you feel lucky, punk? Feel exactly. Lucky. You mind if I touch it to you? So this was used in a lot of pop culture, a lot of movies. You see Dirk Benedict use this in the original A-Team a ton. Ah. Um, and one of my personal favorites is uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Egg Shen carries one of these. This is ah. a big gun, man. It make is. you feel like Dirty Harry? Exactly. Yeah, there you go. So this gun fires a 44 Magnum round, yeah. and this comes from Elmer Keith's work with the 44 Special round, which came from the 44 Russian round, which was one of the original rounds for the Schofield that we looked at earlier. Wow, that's nice. cool, man. 
So at the time, this was the most powerful production handgun in the world, oh. as Dirty Harry told us. Pretty iconic uh, in pop culture as well. A lot of high-end uh, figures, Dirty Harry, things like that, yep. made this gun very popular in the public sphere. Right, and you see it in a lot of video games. Like you said, Call oh, yeah. of Duty, it shows up, Resident Evil 5, State of Decay, all kinds of different games. All so right. talking about iconic revolver rounds, so you have like 357 and then 44. Right. Obviously 44 is a bigger round. Yeah. So big differences between these pistols. Is there a big significant or which one came first? Uh, the 357 and the 44 were around the same time. Elmer Keith came up with this based on the 44 Special and the 44 okay. Russian. And the 44 Russian, which we mentioned with the Schofield, was one of the original calibers for that pistol. So he necked everything up, added a lot more powder, gave it a lot more room for a lot more velocity. So you're talking around 1500, 1550 feet per second oh, yeah. with these at the muzzle. And you can kind of see the difference between a modern nine millimeter and the 44. Slight difference, just a yeah. slight. A little bit bigger. Oh my I God. I mean, I'm excited that. not only to shoot this, but I want to know the effects it's going to have on that ballistics gel. Yeah. I think we're going to see a giant cavity. You're going to have a lot more energy out of this oh, yeah. for that, sure. And the flat head, do you think that's going to make a difference as opposed to like a standard kind of round? Definitely. Kind of yeah. oh, Definitely. Okay. And you talked a little bit about uh, who used this originally, what the intent was for. Yeah, the intent was mostly for law enforcement. Okay. They needed something a little bit bigger with more stopping power, so that's what they came up with. All right, cool. Nice, man. Well, I'm excited to shoot this thing, uh, man. I'm very let's... excited to this very manly gun right <laughs> yeah, here. Yes. Let's blow some holes and some <laughs> yeah. Let's get it done. All right. Here we are. So model 29, 44 mag, who's up first? You know what? You can go first. Well, that's so generous of you. I appreciate that, Cameron. You, yeah, you know why? Because I want to see your wrist break first. <laughs> <laughs> Range is hot, eyes and ears. Dang it. Uh, too high? Can you see? I can't see splash. There it is. There it is. With authority. Yeah, you can bring it down just an inch or two. There you go. There nice. we go. And then tip it up and hit that ejector rod. Right in front? Yep. Yes, sir. All right. Give it a shot on double action this time? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, you said it on the wrong side. Keep going, you'll find it. Oh, you'll man. find it eventually. There's practice your recoil uh, anticipation there. Oh, I did not anticipate it that time. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm gonna try a single hand. Hang on to it. Well, nice. I hung on to it, just didn't yeah. hit anything. <laughs> Nice, that is, yeah, that that's feel? a lot of power yeah. in the hands right there. Yeah, you gotta have a, a sure grip, because if any uh, finger's out of place or something, that's gonna get it snapped by the hammer or the, the, the gas coming out and stuff like that. But yeah, that's a powerful round. Yeah, and you can hear it smacking the hell out of those yeah, targets, yeah. right? Yeah, oh yeah, that's a powerful, I love it. Yeah. Really cool, Cameron? I get out of my way, I was that. <laughs> yeah, it's a double action, but it's just a really heavy trigger. I'll demonstrate. Oh my God, that is so heavy. <laughs> Sorry. Good Harris, habits die bad hard. Bad habits right? die hard. Dude, hey, at least you got good habits. There you got you go. good habits built up. You know? Yeah, Guns muscle go. memory, that's what happens when you train it. <laughs> Gun's going hot. All right. Well, that was a hoot and a half. <laughs> right? I gotta tell you, first impressions, never having laid my hands on this guy. I got problems with the grip, man. I'm very used to the nine millimeter semi-automatic pistol. I got the Glock. You know, Glock I got my- and the Glock. And I got the Glock and <laughs> the Glock. Five best pistols Glock. of all time. Glock, 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 Glock. Yeah. <laughs> So when I get my hands on a revolver, I feel pretty awkward, man. It's, it's definitely a, a different grip and a different feel. You know, even just staging the trigger in double action is a totally different feel from what we do with a semi-auto. Yeah, yeah, I got the fat finger, even like the down, my hand fingers like on the, the trigger well. I, I'm thinking that's the trigger, but it's the outside of the trigger. I gotta fit it in there. Yep. I'm afraid I'm gonna misfire. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah it's I'm a good experience the, though. I'm having the same issue there too, just cause I'm such a, you know, modern pistol guy, not nearly, my mustache isn't thick enough to like truly like have a respect for this pistol. I thought it was gonna kick a lot more 
than it did. And it's extremely manageable. Like follow on shots, I don't think were that big of a problem because my sight snapped right back. Mm -hmm. um, it was just, yeah, that grip, just trying to figure out how to properly place my thumbs and do I come around with my support hand a little bit more and do I let it go? I always found my fingers wanted to go in front of the trigger guard. Yep. And I was just like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Right. Um, but honestly, it's a sure shot of a pistol and revolvers tend to like always work and just shoot straight as hell. Right. I'm wondering to myself, like what purpose would I own a revolver? Maybe even one of like this size or caliber or whatever. It's, I guess it just depends on like what you're gonna use it for. I'll tell you what, man. When you wanna tell the bad guy, <laughs> Definitely great home defense right? weapon. Yeah, I mean, Robert De Niro and Taxi Driver loved it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of times you'll see hunters use these as sidearms if they're in bear country and yeah. whatnot, because it's a big enough round to hopefully right. stop one yeah. uh, on the charge. But it was a little overkill for law enforcement. It kind of faded out in the 90s. Everybody's starting to switch over to automatics. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for a long time, this was kind of the de rigueur revolver for a lot of law enforcement especially yeah. after Dirty Harry came out. 1971, yeah. you could not find these for any price. Everybody wanted one. Yeah, it shoots clean, shoots straight, and I mean, it does what exactly what it's supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. great exposure, great familiarity, especially for me, I have very little experience with revolvers. Right, yeah, and, and you mention. <laughs> yeah. Look at that bad boy. Yeah, punch through, nice expansion, and that was with a... Uh, yeah, no, the <laughs> copper jacketed lead round. Oh yeah, it definitely, comparing it to the Schofield, like the Schofield's penetration was gnarly, but it was just straight through. Yeah. This, you actually started to see the expansion and the cavity start to form, which I mean, kind of knew it was gonna happen just by looking at the size of the actual projectile with the flat head on it. But yeah, this is gonna do some serious damage on a non-armored target. Right. I would love to see what it does to an armored target, but be interesting that to see. might be a different day. Well, Clay, thank you so much for joining us. Always. Uh, it's Always been fun. a great time. Always a great time when you come in. Folks, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Lethal Antiquities. And if you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button, that like button, that notification bell. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know what other weapons you'd like to see in future episodes of Lethal Antiquities. We'll see you in the next one, team. Go weapons. Yes, it's my favorite segment for that exact reason. But before we dive in, Make sure you subscribe to Shift Fire so you can stay up on the latest and greatest from everything. That's beauty. <laughs> Another beauty. That's good. Mm-hmm.